Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So past couple of weeks, I've had a few people reach out to me asking me exactly how I reviewed my UWorld questions and how I studied from UWorld. So I decided to go ahead and make a video on this today. If this sounds like something you're interested in, please keep watching. Also, please don't forget to like the video if you liked it, as well as subscribe for more content like this. Now let's get into it. So the first thing I want to say about UWorld is that it's definitely the best QBank out there for step one prep, and it's the QBank that I used during my dedicated. Also, I did use Amboss a little bit. I didn't use it that much, and I enjoyed Amboss as well, but again, I maybe did two or 300 questions with Amboss. Amboss is definitely another really good QBank, but I wouldn't recommend it as much in dedicated. I would recommend it more while you're in basic sciences. Okay, to show you exactly how I reviewed UWorld questions as well as how I studied from UWorld, I'm going to go ahead and put up a screenshot over here where I wrote down a sample question. So again, this question is written in my own words, but it's very close to the UWorld style that you'll see. Okay, so I'll be reading it from my notebook, um, but you'll see a screenshot of it over here. Okay, so the first thing I do when I get to my UWorld question is I first read the last line of the question. So for this question, it asks, why is his prothrombin time high? So now we know what the question is asking. And then I quickly skim the choices we have A through D, okay? I just quickly skim through it. Then I start from the beginning of the question. So we have, a 53-year-old man complains of increasing abdominal girth. Physical exam reveals mild jaundice, slight hepatomegaly, and dilated veins around his umbilicus. Fluid wave is also present with an abdomen. Labs show total bilirubin 5.4, high. Direct bilirubin 4.2, which is high. Alkaline phosphatase is elevated. AST is 300, which is high. ALT is 150A, which is high. Total protein is 6.4. Albumin is 2.2, which is low, and prothrombin time is 18 seconds, which is high. And then I read the question again. Why is his prothrombin time high? So we have A, decreased synthesis of factor VIII by the liver. B, he is taking aspirin. C, decreased synthesis of factor VII by the liver. D, interference of intrinsic coag pathway. Okay, this concept of PT and PTT is very high yield because they can tie this into multiple systems. Um, they can definitely tie this into heme, such as heme disorders, such as von Willebrand disease, hemophilia. And in this scenario, they use PT for liver cirrhosis. And it looks like it's most likely alcoholic liver cirrhosis in this scenario because his AST is pretty high. So for this question, I, I asked, why is his prothrombin high? So the first thing I look at when I see a question like this is I definitely pay attention to the labs. Labs alone will help you narrow down to the correct answer. Now I know not every question will have labs, but in this case it does. So the labs alone will help me understand what's going on in this case. Now you have to remember certain things about the liver function for this question. For example, knowing that the basic markers of liver function, such as albumin and the PT, uh, prothrombin time, that's a huge clue to know what's going on. In general, when they share labs in a question with you, it's because it's pertinent to the question. It's very important. So already looking at the labs, we can tell that it's some kind of liver cirrhosis. So his AST is high, okay? most likely related to alcohol and his liver function is also declining remember the markers of liver function albumin levels as well as pt prothrombin time so with the albumin low like this we can already figure out that the liver function is declining with the prothrombin time high for this question it's at 18 seconds we can see that the liver is not making enough clotting factors Another function of the liver is making these clotting factors that we need. So after reading the question, what I do is I do sort of a process of elimination. So I'll go ahead and take out the choices that I know don't make sense. So option A, decreased synthesis of factor VIII by the liver. This is where the knowledge of the difference between PT and PTT becomes helpful. 
as we know, PT looks more into factor seven and PTT looks more into factor eight. So in this case, his PT is high. They didn't say anything about his PTT. So we can go ahead and mark option A off. Option B, he is taking aspirin. Aspirin has nothing to do with PT. Aspirin is more related to the Cox pathway. So we can go ahead and take that off. Option C, decreased synthesis of factors two, seven, nine by the liver. This could be an option, so we'll go ahead and leave this open. Option D, interference of intrinsic coag pathway. So if you have knowledge on the intrinsic and extrinsic pathways, you will know the intrinsic pathway measures more factor eight, eight as well as PTT. So essentially option D is option A, but worded differently. So for this question, C is the best answer. So after getting the right answer, I would then go through the multiple choice options and I would reword it in such a way to make that option correct. Um, I didn't start doing this until the end of my dedicated. Before, what I would do is I would make an Anki card on the different concepts that were shown in the multiple choice options. For example, option B, he is taking aspirin. I would go ahead and make an Anki card on the Cox pathway, ensuring I know exactly where aspirin interferes with the pathway and what we would see if aspirin was being used in the patient. And then um, I would also go ahead and make an Anki card on the difference between PT and PTT. What clotting factors affect which? So I would say for PT, clotting factors 2, 7, 9, 10 are most important whereas PTT, plotting factor eight is most important. And then I would specify which pathway belongs to which PT or PTT. For example, intrinsic pathway belongs to PTT, whereas extrinsic pathway belongs to PT. These are very important little details and they've come up multiple times on exams for me, both in my medical school as well as on MBMEs and step. So it's definitely important to pay attention to these concepts because they will be repeated multiple times in different ways. So that's why I would make Anki cards on concepts such as these. And then lastly, I want to say in the beginning of my dedicated, the time it took for me to review, to review a block was around three hours. And this was because I also made my own Anki cards on the concepts that I felt like I needed more review on. So in the beginning, it might take you a little bit longer, but just be patient. It'll definitely get faster as you keep doing them. And again, the only reason mine took that long was because I made my own Anki cards. But towards the end of my dedicated, I wasn't making Anki cards anymore, and I was just reviewing the concepts presented in UWorld. And I definitely finished my blocks a lot faster. I was finishing reviewing a block in an hour or so. So again, just be patient with yourself in the beginning. It will take a little time to get used to it, but it will get faster as you keep doing it. As far as other QBanks go, um, the other QBank that I used um, that I mentioned before was Amboss. And I did enjoy Amboss, but I used this more when I was, such as if I was just relaxing for five or 10 minutes and I wanted to quiz myself on a certain topic, I would go ahead and do five questions on Amboss on that topic. And that's how I used Amboss more. I didn't do full 40 questions, like a whole block on Amboss. It was more five questions here or there if I needed to, if I wanted to review a certain topic. Also, I want to add in the beginning when I was doing UWorld, I read the whole explanation because that helps you understand why the other multiple choice options aren't correct. And then that way, when you understand why they're not correct, you can reword it in a way where they, where they are correct. So that was also something I did in the beginning. So I would say, okay, option A is not the answer. How would I reword it where it is correct? How would I reword the question where it is correct? So in that way, you're reviewing multiple topics in one question. And I found this method very helpful for me. So again, in the beginning of my dedicated, I was reviewing the whole UWorld explanation and rewording the question to where the wrong answer options were right. And I would make Anki cards on all these concepts. So I hope this helps anyone who's looking for ways to review UWorld. I hope this inspired people or gave people ideas on what they can do to, to review their UWorld blocks. Again, this is how I did it and this is how I found it most helpful to review UWorld. 
So I hope this helped and gave you some inspiration. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.